Welcome back. It's time for your boy to be boy to 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 uh to 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 um um do things. Good day, Master Reed. My name is Albert. I'm in the service of the Duke. Thank you for making a save. i Do not hesitate to let me know. Oh, oh, oh. I can sense someone inside. Hmm. Come on in if you like. That sounds like. Excuse me. You better believe I will. I believe in entering first, asking questions later. Hello there, love. I want to know what happened to her eye. I'd heard you came on board yesterday, so I did wonder whether we would run into one another at some point. Hello, Scarlet. <laughs> Just, Last ooh. time we spoke was a month and a half ago near Trista, I think. Quite a memorable day for both of us, wasn't it? There's no need to stand over there. Come and have a seat. I'll pour us some tea. It, you really don't have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I well, whistle. I guess there's no harm in chatting for a bit. She's clearly humming. <laughs> These tea leaves really are wonderful, aren't they? Only the best for the airship of Erebonia's most powerful noble, I suppose. I have to admit, the fragrance is like no tea I've ever had before. You're right, though. It makes sense if it's something Duke Cayenne personally chose. Oh? I was under the impression that your family is a part of the nobility, too. Your father is a baron, isn't he? He might be a noble, but generally barons aren't all that wealthy. We live a relatively modest lifestyle. <laughs> oh, really? I wouldn't have thought it before, but maybe my family was actually more well-off than yours. And Scarlet! I heard she lost her old hometown when he went and built a railway through it. What kind of family did you come from then? Oh, they weren't nobles, if that's what you're wondering. They were just relatively wealthy farmers. Oh. We were almost local celebrities in a way. Oh, I see. <laughs> you're wondering how someone like me became a terrorist? Yes. It's written all over your face. Well, I can't deny that I'm curious. I heard that you lost your hometown because Osborne built a railway through it. Oh, did C tell you? No, I suppose it must have been V. He never was one to keep quiet about things. So, I mean, what happened? Some things are best left unsaid, I think. It's not as if knowing would somehow allow you to change things. I suppose. <laughs> You're so adorable, Reen. Now I know why C took a liking to you. Yeah. What do you say? How about you come and fight with me and the other big girls and boys? It'll be fun, I promise. <sighs> Please, stop teasing me. Anyway, thank you for the tea. It wasn't just made with high-quality leaves. It was brewed exceptionally, too. <laughs> You're very welcome. Oh, actually, I may as well ask while I have the chance. Where did you learn how to use that weapon of yours anyway? It's pretty unique. Oh, that? I suppose it can't hurt to tell you. The holy city of Arteria. Whoa. The Arteria? Where the high seat of the Septian Church is? That's the one. It's called a Templar Sword, and it's a traditional weapon in the church. A few years ago, I was studying to be a sister and was trained in how to use it there. Surely you must be talking about some other church, right? You're telling me there are sisters in the Septian Church who use weapons like that? <laughs> there are more things in this world you don't know than you could possibly imagine. Well, it doesn't matter much now. I ended up returning to Erebonia before my training was complete. Oh? Anyway, that's all I'm telling you for now. I'll give you the full story if you decide to join us. Sound fair? And if you choose not to join? Well, that way has its own charms, I suppose. She seems really casual with the idea of me joining. She ended up being a lot friendlier than I expected her to be. I 
wonder how much of what she was saying about being a sister was true. She seemed to really hate the Chancellor. I wonder what she intends to do now that he's gone. I'm guessing this probably can be someone inside. And judging by the fact that S is in the next room. Yeah. Huh? It's open. Come on in. Excuse me. Hey, Vulcan. Oh, it's you. You finished talking with C? His name's Crow, not C, and he's never going to be anything else for me. <laughs> oh, I know his real name, but to us, he's always gonna be C. That's our leader. He might be young, but each and every one of us look up to him and respect him. Anyway, take a seat. You've got a whole lot of questions, I bet. Does you asking that mean you're willing to answer them? <laughs> Depends on the questions. Fair enough. Just out of curiosity. If this were a choose-your-own-adventure game, you would be presented with a list of questions you could ask. How many members does the Imperial Liberation Front have left? I know the explosion back in the mine was staged, obviously. Sure was. Anyway, uh, ten, give or take. We lost most of our members as soon as the war started kicking into gear. Oh. Is that because the group's primary objective had been fulfilled? Basically, yeah. We all came from different backgrounds. But the one thing we had in common was that we hated that bastard's guts. So after he kicked it, most of the guys didn't really have any reason for sticking around. Can't say I blame him for calling it quits. Crow said that seeing this war through to its end was the last part of his game. Are the members who haven't left sticking around for similar reasons? <laughs> Interesting question. Can't speak for the others, but me? I don't really care how this war goes. I mean, I'm a former Jaeger who can hold his own in a fight. I've always lived for war. And teaching those dumbasses in the provincial armies how to pilot soldats is a job worth doing, even if it's a pain. Yeah. If we disband, I'll find myself something else to do. I see. Yeah, it's pretty casual with it. <laughs> I can't defend the assassination of the Chancellor, or what you did near Trista, but I'd be happy if you chose to disband at least. <laughs> You're a funny kid, being oddly nice to us after all the shit you caused, don't you think? The cycle of hatred's gone on for long enough. The crimes you've committed will never vanish, but no one wants this war to go on longer than it has to. It's not as though you guys want war, do you? <laughs> That's enough of the niceties. If you've got time to worry about us, you have to worry about yourself. Whether you choose to side with the Alliance or go against them, you've got a tough road ahead, whether you like it or not. Make sure to think long and hard before you decide. And if we end up as enemies again, show me what you got. On the battlefield, I mean. Excuse me. I think I might have been too harsh on the kid. Still... Yeah. He's probably perfect for the job. Hmm. I, I like they're all he being saw right through me. surprisingly nice. He's not wrong, though. I should be worrying about myself right now. He seemed kind of different, though. Like he'd lost his spark. His sole objective in life seemed to be to get revenge for his old Jaeger Corps killed by Osborne. Maybe he's just not sure what to do with himself now that he's done just that? I mean, it stands to reason that if a man loses his entire thing for being... You know. Good day to you, Rean Schwarzer. What the? You're the Phantom Thief! You sure look comfortable. What are you doing here? 
<laughs> Why wouldn't I be? I'm as much a guest on this ship as you are. And who would deny themselves the pleasure of a ship so beautiful? Fair enough. The furnishings are immaculate. The food and wine are positively sumptuous. And I am of the firm belief that it's wasteful not to take advantage of the opportunities life presents you. Ah, and speaking of opportunities, don't just stand there. Take a seat and join me in having a drink. You've been blessed with the rare chance to sit and chat one-on-one -on -one with the most beloved thief of our time. I can't believe that's how you describe yourself. <laughs> well, what the hell. I'll have a drink. Nothing alcoholic, though. Funny. I didn't realize you'd met Prince Oliver. Indeed. There are few even among royals whose palate is so refined as his. Between our shared love of beauty and fundamental difference of opinion on the nature of love, he forever remains an endless source of entertainment for me. I like that they're rivals. I really want to play Trails in the Sky so bad, because that's where Prince Oliver shows up the first time. As Olivier. I suddenly feel very sorry for him. What happened down in Liberal sounds pretty amazing, though. I'd heard there were problems with orbital technology in Southern Erebonia at the time, but I had no idea that was why. <laughs> that magnificent floating city was quite the sight to behold, let me tell you. Oh, how I wish I could have shown it to you. Floating city? It would have changed your view of the world completely. It really does sound amazing. Hold on a sec. Okay, cool. Wait, why am I sitting here having a friendly discussion with a wanted criminal? He has so many interesting and unusual stories, I got completely caught up listening to them. Ha <laughs> ha! A thief of my caliber can steal much more than objects read. There, I was able to steal much of your time and your interest. Perhaps I stole your heart as well. Rest assured that did not happen. Your stories were interesting, though, I'll admit. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know where Prince Oliver is now, would you? Last I checked, he wasn't actively fighting against the Alliance. Ha <laughs> ha! I imagined you, Kayan, would welcome a man like the Prince with open arms into the Alliance, if he so wished to join. To my knowledge, he was always wary of the Chancellor himself. But I digress. I'm afraid not even I know where he is at the moment. However, I'm inclined to believe that wherever he's hiding, the Crimson Wings is there with him. So the Courageous is missing too, then. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure that was loud. Although the Duke's got some nerve if he expects Prince Oliver to side with him after he imprisoned the rest of the Imperial family. But think. These kinds of things are simply what the great nobles of this country have always done. The War of the Lions, too, was brought about by numerous families of some standing, backing potential successors to the throne. Yeah. Emperor Dracos, as a late arrival to the war, was a mere exception to the rule. <laughs> I wonder, does Prince Oliver think himself as the second coming of Dracos? One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. Yeah, dude. I don't think he does. From what I can tell, he intends to try and end this war in a slightly different way from Dracos. Oh? Do tell. Sorry, but I should be going. Thanks for all the interesting stories. They helped me work through things in my head a bit. 
Ha <laughs> ha! I'm pleased to hear it. Where did you get the mask? I will be waiting at the edge of my seat to hear which path you choose. Join us, and you'll be warmly welcomed. Naturally, I'm fascinated by you as the Ashen Knight's pilot, but I'm even more fascinated with that brute strength of yours. I would love the chance to see the power of an ogre up close. I doubt it's half as interesting as what you're thinking. Anyway, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> well, we'll have to find out, won't we? Of course I know, but again, everyone should know by this point I've played these games. Uh, we'll go here. I wonder who's in here. Hmm. We got a visitor? Come on in. Excuse me. <laughs> and you've been in the boss room. <laughs> Figured it was you. What's up? Have a seat. Bourbon? I suppose not. Yeah, I really shouldn't. How come you guys are being so friendly, though? I mean, we're on opposing sides and all. <laughs> Why wouldn't we be? It's not like we're on a battlefield right now. Oh, fair enough. We're Jaegers. Nothing unusual about us trying to cut some throats one day than sitting in a bar with the same guys the next. Of course, if you would rather fight with us, that can be arranged. <laughs> I shall have to politely decline. For one thing, I don't think I'd stand the slightest chance of taking you two down. Hey, now, no need to be so pessimistic. He seems to think pretty highly of you. Have a little more faith in yourself. At the very least, you'd be able to give us a real fight in your divine night. Not that I'd have any intention of losing even then. The scary thing is, I'm pretty sure he's dead serious. Well, they're used to taking out tanks. They probably have their ways. Nah. Huh. Oh, yeah? oh, yeah? Ranking 72nd Ranking for the year in an academy full of big shot students ain't half bad. Yeah. <sighs> Brings a tear to my eye to see our little fee putting her heart into her education. And don't forget, she was the youngest of her classmates, too. The boss was right when he said that she can do anything she puts her mind to. Yeah, that right. Maybe joining the gardening club will make her a bit more ladylike, too. Oh, who am I kidding? She's still young. <laughs> she has plenty of time to develop on that front if she so pleases. <laughs> they really seem to adore her. Like two proud parents talking about their child. And yet... If you don't mind me asking, why did you leave V behind? After your boss was killed in a battle with his sworn enemy, I mean. Oh, he told you about that. It sounds like you're closer to her than I thought you were. I trust this is simply me being paranoid. But you haven't tried making any moves on her, have you? <laughs> no, of course not. I wouldn't dream of it. I just want to know why you'd abandon her when she obviously means so much to the two of you. She thought of you all like family. Why did you leave her all alone? Well, hmm. We had our reasons. Let's leave it at that. I know you want to know, but you're not the one we should be telling that to. We'll be sure to tell Fee our reasons in due time. Until then, leave the issue be. All right. I can accept that. Still, she's our classmate. In that sense, she's like family to me. To us, too. And we feel that way about her just as strongly as you do. Not more so. I want to be perfectly clear on that. <laughs> Fighting words right there. Still, we'll remember you said that. Returning to the matter at hand, you're sure you haven't tried to make any moves on her? Come on, spit it out. They really are like two overprotective fathers. <laughs> I really like that. I really... I was hoping to get a bit more out of them about what Zephyr is up to. All we did was talk about Fee the whole time. <sighs> oh well. At least now I know that the guys in Zephyr really cared about her. So it wasn't a complete waste of time. No. Yeah. <sighs> Have 
having to travel to and from Crossbell like this is utterly exhausting. No, I mustn't complain. I'm doing this for the sake of my lord. Um, didn't I see her in the gram? Who goes there? Wait, you're the Ashen Knight's pilot. I remember yeah. you now. You're with Ouroboros, Duvali the Swift, right? Have you no shame? Is it perhaps normal for you to barge into a lady's room unannounced? Uh, you and that Arsade are only as bad as each other, I swear. Learn your place! Actually, I just walked through the door normally. I should have probably knocked before I came in, though. Sorry about that. Rain's such a gentleman. Oh, wow, did he make her... Did she make him leave so she could change? So, now that we're understood, what do you want? Have you come to tell me that you'll be fighting on our side after all? Can you not jump to conclusions? Besides, it's not like you're working with the Alliance because you agree with what they're doing. Oh, naturally. Lady Clotilde seems to have a purpose of her own. But for my part, I have no obligation to help the Alliance whatsoever. I'm simply cooperating because I was told doing so was necessary to the plan. Plan? I'm not sure what she's getting at. I wonder. Just so we're clear, that lord you keep mentioning isn't Vita Clotilde, is it? No, no. She may be an Anguis like her, but my lord is the seventh, not the second. She's the leader of the Stallridder, the great light which guides us, gallant yet beautiful, proud yet merciful. She's the strongest knight of all, and oh, she's simply divine. Well, you've made it clear how great you think she is. So the head of the Stall Ritter is also a woman? She certainly is. And if you must know, a hundred swordsmen of your strength couldn't hope to equal her. No, a thousand, even ten thousand of you wouldn't be able to so much as scratch her. That's a lot of boasting for someone else. Okay, I get it. She's strong. Still, if she's a woman who could be described as the strongest knight of all, Laura already noticed the similarity between the Eisenritter and Stall Ritter. But she really does sound like Saint Sandlot. <laughs> I see I've got you thinking. Incidentally, I may have already mentioned her title, but one can never share my lord's glory too many times. She's known as the Steel Maiden. The Steel Maiden, huh? And with that, I believe that's enough idle chatter. If you didn't come to tell me that you'll be fighting on our side, then we remain enemies. As such, we shouldn't be standing here being friendly with one another. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Sorry for bothering you. Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to ask. Oh, yeah? You're not an enforcer like Blue Blanc or Sharon, right? Is there any reason for that? Uh, you just had to ask. <laughs> Enforcers are selected by the Society's leader, the Grand Master. And in order to be selected as one and given a number, that person needs to be burdened by some kind of darkness. Huh? But just so we're clear, there is no correlation between having a number and one's strength, all right? I'm quite strong. I didn't say you weren't, but it makes perfect sense. You don't strike me as someone who's carrying any kind of darkness with you. You're refreshingly sincere. Like someone who hates anything that strays from the path of righteousness. I'll thank you not to spout such nauseating drivel in my presence. Now get the hell out of my room! And she's a tsundere. You can tell by the blush. She was caught off guard by that compliment. <clears throat> she chased me out. I'm really curious about the Steel Maiden. Could she really have some connection with the Lance Maiden? Perhaps even with the woman who helped us during our August field study. Perhaps. Huh? I think I can sense someone inside. Given the circumstances, I imagine it must be one of the people who fought us in Ymir. Open. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. There's it's no empty. Weird. I could have sworn I sent someone in here. Oh. Why are you sleeping in a bed with no covers? <sighs> Looking at her lying down like this, she really is just a child. Yep. Maybe 12 or 13? Somewhere close to Milliam's age. How did a kid like this end up fighting with the Alliance? Situation assessed. Location is a room inside the guest area of the Pentagon. Nine hours have passed since initial loss of consciousness. Guess she's sleeping comfortably enough here. Then again, she needs it at her age. She's got plenty of growing left. Wait. Huh? Um, good morning? Green Schwarzer, why are you here? Why indeed? Unless my memories have been tampered with. I believe this room was solely allocated to me. Oh, it was. Sorry. If I'd known you were sleeping, I wouldn't have come in here. So you're an intruder then? Clown Soleus. No, it was Whoa. just an innocent mistake. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, Dodge, can we fool. at least talk about this? No mercy for trespassers. <laughs> you got the floor like a sack of potatoes. So you claim to have no inappropriate motives for sneaking into this room? Not claim! I really didn't! But once you walked in, you fell victim to temptation and chose to act in accordance to your desires. <laughs> no! No, I didn't! <sighs> How many times do I have to explain what happened before you'll believe me? I was making a joke. Had you any intention of harming me, Clown Soleus would have attacked you. That he didn't prove your innocence. Jeez. Oh, right. Then what was all that for? <sighs> oh, whatever. <laughs> I suppose it's my own fault for coming in without permission. Anyway, I've cleared my name. I'll see you some other time, probably. If that's what you want to do, you didn't come to ask me anything then? Well, no. Honestly, I didn't even know you were in here. I do have a lot I'd like to ask you, though. And just as much I'd like to say to you. Okay, if you're offering, what are your reasons for helping the Alliance? Why do you have a puppet just like Millions? Just who are you? The answer to your first question is, I was ordered to do so. Okay. As all information regarding Clown Soleus is confidential, I am unable to answer your second question. And as for the last one, I am unable to fully comprehend the depth of your question. Uh, oh, forget it. You abducted my sister and the princess. Whether you were ordered to or not doesn't change that. And it's not something I think I can forgive. See you around. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably too harsh. I can't pretend to know anything about your circumstances. But I do know that you didn't abduct them of your own free will. Anyway, with that said, I'll be going. Maybe we'll have a chance to talk again sometime. The Black Workshop. What? That's the name of the place I belong to. It was they who loaned me to the Noble Alliance. Unless you choose to join the Alliance, that is the most I'm able to disclose to you. Okay, I'll join the Alliance. Really? Yeah, totally. Tells me everything. Alright, cool. I lied. The name doesn't ring any bells. Bye! Or you wouldn't do that, though. And loaned? That makes it sound like... I suppose it's none of my business. <laughs> Thanks for telling me. I'll be sure to remember that name. I can't see doing so holding any real purpose for you. Incidentally, 
Did you have any untoward motives behind what you just did? No, I did not. The Black Workshop won't? Yep. Sounds like stuff worth remembering. <laughs> so it does. We're uncovering a lot today, boys. And the one I think I, I wanted to see the most. Someone inside. Uh, what the? <laughs> Bored sounding voice. Oh, it's you. I forgot you were staying here too. Yeah. yeah. What was that? It's gone now, anyway. Maybe it was just my imagination. So what's up? I couldn't give a damn whether you joined the Alliance or not, to be honest. Oh. Oh, I didn't come here for any specific reason. Interesting. You mixed by any chance? Could I sit and talk to you for a while? What a pain in the ass. <laughs> I like to imagine Big so, Bird as a dad. And <laughs> Dad's like, Dad, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> he just responds with that. When we ran into each other back near Berea Hard, you asked a weird question. Something about being mixed? Oh, that? I didn't have the chance to figure out what that meant at the time. But what did you mean? Don't know if I can even explain that one. It's just something you feel. What we've got mixed into us is obviously different in strength and nature. It's kind of hard to put into words. <sighs> yeah, seems that way. I know you're not trying to confuse me on purpose, but I really can't wrap my head around what you're saying. <sighs> just watch. Huh? There's no trick to it. I'm not using an orb mint, it's not magic. And I'm not using an artifact either. Okay. It just will fire to appear, and it does. That's some insane. So it's just a totally unnatural ability. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Something that just gives you results without the processes you usually have to go through to obtain them. You've got one too, right? Well, true. That power of mine wasn't something I gained from training. I don't even know where the power itself is coming from. It's the same kind of thing. People who can do things like that usually have something mixed into them. Hmm. Something foreign, unnatural, mixed into their body itself. Different to the church's stigmas. Interesting. It looks like a pretty small part of it in your case, though. Oh. There, huh? Anyway, I couldn't tell you how, where, or why whatever it is got mixed into you. Sure you've got more questions, but sorry. I can't answer. Interesting. No, it's okay. You've answered enough already. I feel like I understand myself a little better now, actually. <laughs> Good for you, I guess. So, we done now? Excuse yeah. Me. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Oh yeah. So how much of you is unnatural? Me? Epic. All of me. <laughs> hmm. His circumstances seem very different from mine. <coughs> Guess all I can do is remember what he said. Maybe there will come a time when it'll all make sense. I'm sure one day I'll find out what this power of mine is. What the story behind me being given this power as a kid is. Yep. One day. Alright, cool. Alright. Well. There's only one other place to go. This should be the guest of honor's room. Time to see. Time to see who's inside. Yes? Who is it? Please 
Come in. That sounds like. Excuse me. I had a feeling it was you, but I didn't dare to hope. Give him a hug. Your Highness. What are... I mean, I mean, how did you get here? This all feels like a dream. Please don't tell me it is. I don't think my heart could handle the disappointment. <laughs> it's really me. I'm so glad you're safe. I'm so sorry that you had to go through all of this. If I hadn't been so weak and careless, none of this would have happened. Simply being able to see you again is more than I could have hoped for. Aww. You must have been really lonely. I'm here for you now, though. I might not be the most reliable person for the job, but I'm not going anywhere. So that's what you've been doing all this time? Oh. Yeah. I was happy all of us were able to get back together again, but then yesterday, I ended up being invited onto the ship by Duke Cayenne. That's why I'm here, talking to you. I do recall thinking things were a little noisier than usual yesterday. Now I know why. You, yeah, you. <laughs> Strange as it may sound, I suppose I owe the Duke my thanks. After all, if not for his invitation, we wouldn't have been able to find each other like this. Sorry. I wish I could say I'd snuck on board to rescue you or something. Incidentally, I hesitate to ask, but... You want to know where Elise is, right? She's not on this ship, I'm afraid. I can't say for sure, but I believe she's been taken to the same place as my parents. Really? I'm sure it isn't news to you that my mother, father, and Cedric have been imprisoned somewhere. And apparently... They've chosen Elise to be my family's attendant. So it's likely wherever they've been taken, she's right there with them. Really? I'm not sure whether to feel relieved or what. <laughs> I can hardly blame you. I feel exactly the same way, even. But why were you alone imprisoned on this airship? Surely there must be some reason. That was Duke Cayenne's decision. Of course it was. I believe he's using me to suppress potential rebellion in areas occupied by the Alliance by having me address the people and calm them down. Forgive me for saying so, but that's a little messed up. Using you like that. I don't especially mind doing it, honestly. It's a simple enough task. People all across Erebonia are uneasy about this war. And as princess, I should do what's within my power to help calm their nerves. But at the expense of your own feelings? Yeah. I know you want to help, but you can't be happy about being used as the Alliance's puppet to deceive them. Plus, you've been forcibly separated from your family, your best friend. You don't even know where they are. Yes, but... Oh, why even bother? You see through everything, don't you, Reen? Anyway, He's got those unclouded my eyes. Aside, uh, what do you plan to do now? I presume you don't intend to actually do whatever Duke Cayenne tells you to. Well, I'm really not sure what to do. The longer this war goes on, the more people will suffer because of it. But even so, I don't feel as though siding with the Noble Alliance is the right course of action. You're darn right it's not. And the same goes for the Imperial Army. I can't in good conscience side with them either. I see. There's so much to think about. You're being used as a puppet against your will? And then Elise is imprisoned somewhere too, being forced to do who knows what. I have to act somehow to change things. That wasn't your fault, Reen. Ever since I was taken in by my family all those years ago, I've tried to be a brother figure to her. 
I became the person I am today because of them. They've always loved me like they would a real son. And she's always treated me like a real older brother. You saw that power of mine, didn't you? And what I look like when I use it? Well, um... Yes, I did. Back when I was a kid, something just like that happened. I ended up using it right there in front of her. She should have been terrified of me. But if she was, she never once let it show. She treated me exactly the same as before. And that was when I swore, deep within my heart, no matter what happened, no matter what I had to do, I would always protect her. I don't know what it is about this little baby Reen covered in blood. <laughs> with, that, with that horrified expression. And that's why I can't help but wonder. I can't help but wonder if now's the time to live up to that promise. If I should put her before everything else. Trails Like Daybreak comes out next year. I'm so excited! Even if I have to ignore or outright betray my own personal beliefs in the process. Reen. <sighs> Expect the full playthrough, by the way. Do you? What? It, it, your Highness. I know Elise far better than you think I do. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say I know her better than you. Reen, she's already told me so much about what happened eight years ago. She told me about how that snowy day was what inspired you to take up the sword. She told me how traumatic that moment was for you. How what happened stays with you even now. And she even told me that while she hated how she felt, she felt the tiniest bit happy because of it. Because it meant that your attention, your guilt, and your sense of responsibility were directed towards her and no one else. And she knew more than anyone how selfish that was. <laughs> she may have had other reasons for choosing to go to St. Astraya. But her main reason was that she didn't want you to keep feeling guilty because of her. More than anything else, she wanted to free you of your burdens. <sighs> you should know, when you joined Thor's and were making new friends, and you finally seemed to be moving forward, she felt a little jealous, and even a little lonely at being left behind. But she was so very, very happy for you too. So please, Reen, please don't use Elise to justify not choosing your place in this war. Because I know for a fact, she wants you, of all people, to carve your own path and find true happiness. I... Hmm. How could I have been so blind? All this time, I thought I was trying to protect her, and it's been the other way around since the start. That's so just... And that's not just true for her either. Mom, Dad, Master Kafai, all my friends at Thor's, they've been supporting me this whole time. How could I have missed something so obvious? I don't know if he is, but I hope Master Kafai is in the next game. I think I finally understand what I've been lacking inside of me all this time. I want to see him at least once. Come on, we get to see the freaking Radiant Blade Master. I was so focused on trying to protect others, I never stopped to think about how relationships go both ways. Hmm. Others try to support me just like I try to support them. And I have as much of an effect on them as they do on me. How did I not realize before That's now? a great face. I'm sorry, Master. I think you gave me that intermediate scroll a bit too soon. But better to realize late than never, I suppose. Yeah. Because now I finally feel like I'm ready. As long as I keep that fact in mind, I won't lose control again. Reen has attained a new state of mind. He's now ready for a new craft. Spirit unification when the time comes. Are 
Are you all right? I'm fine. And I've got you to thank for that. Forget honorary. You sounded just like my real sister for a minute. So, thank you. I think it's time we get going. I wouldn't want to keep my classmates waiting any longer than I already have. A pity, but you're right. <laughs> I was rather hoping we could stay like this a little while longer. But I suppose all good things have to come to an end. Take care of yourself, Reen. I'll leave Elisa's rescue to you. No matter what it takes, please. Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> I said it's time we get going, didn't I? There's no way I'm leaving my sister's best friend imprisoned in a place like this. Yes! I will get the two of us off this ship. So stay close to me. <gasps> right! Ooh. She got real happy about that. Okay. So let's play it. Let's play it, everybody. Let's play it. Do you have an escape plan? Valmar, Not even a little. The, the Ashen Knight is on the deck. He's chained up there. But if we can get to him, I'm sure we can find some way to use him to get away from here. First, though, we need to find a way to get out of this part of the ship without anyone noticing. All right, then. <laughs> I never imagined I'd be running away from here with you at my side. Elise is going to be so envious. <laughs> anyway, let's get going. Okay. Well. There are a lot of very strong people here, so try to keep your voice down. <laughs> Not to worry. Hmm? This looks like it's an air duct. Thought so. It's a vent. Well, that's convenient. Might it lead to somewhere else on the ship? You think? Most likely. Still. I can't very well ask a princess to crawl through a vent. Nonsense, Reen. Of course you can. I'm ready to begin our great escape. But it's going to be all dark inside. And probably filthy, too. A little bit of darkness and dirt never hurt anyone. I have to travel through some fairly narrow underground passages when escaping from Heimdall, too. All right? How about I go first? I'm smaller than you, after all. No, definitely not. <coughs> Well, uh, as long as you're all right with it. <laughs> but I'll be going first. Like I said before, just stay close to me. Hmm. All right, then. <sighs> You'd think a princess would be more mindful when she's wearing a dress. <laughs> she didn't even notice. That's so funny. Crawling through the vents. I'm surprised. It's not dirty at all in here. Maybe it's because the ship's newly built? It's my turn! Let's move! There's a turn! Oh! There's a corner! We must be past the guest area then. It's like an old school dungeon crawler. Alright, we're gonna stop right here. So I think this is a good spot to end this on as any. I need to check out my food. And I'll probably come back and do one more episode. So thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode of TOCS.